Hey there, my name is Garen Means. I'm a developer educator at Vonage. And in this workshop, we're gonna talk about our Messages API Sandbox, which is a product you can use to send messages with uh, WhatsApp, Viber, Facebook Messenger. And we're gonna go through th creating three servers today with Node.js using those services as well as SMS to send and receive messages. So uh, let's get started. There are minimal prerequisites for this. So the first thing that you want to make sure that you have, obviously, is Node.js for creating a Node.js server. If you don't, you can just go grab the installer or if you need, you know, the more recent version. Um, and you can run that on your machine and it'll install it. Then you want to make sure that you have a Vonage developer account and that you can go into the dashboard and you can see the Messages API sandbox. In the sandbox, you'll see that there are a few different ways of approving your number or device for WhatsApp, Viber, and Messenger. You can choose the one that works best for you. You can do it sort of manually, or you can use these neat QR codes here if you uh, want to be a little quick about it. Down below that, you'll see the webhooks for uh, inbound messages and status messages. And finally, below that at the bottom, you'll see curl commands, uh, examples for WhatsApp, Viber, and Messenger that you can use to test and verify that things are working the way that you would expect them to work from the command line. It's worth noting that you don't have to use the Sandbox API. You can use the regular API and you access that with an application the way you would normally do anything else with Vonage's APIs. So you can create a new application, give it a name, uh, generate your keys, and then if you see the messages block down there, that will give you access to the same sort of information and tooling that you would want to use um, in the Sandbox. So. You just create the application. Uh, th this is a really key part is downloading your uh, your private key, generating your public key and downloading your private key. And then you want to click on the messages abilities here and you see the, the webhooks are the same. There's inbound and status. And then you generate a new application from that. But let's assume that you are starting with the sandbox. To get that going, again, a quick way is just to use these QR codes if you're using your actual device and that will open up the app, uh, application that you need. Then you'll just need to type your passphrase here and that will allow you to get your device approved. So now I've approved my device for Viber. Cool, I'm all set and ready to go with Viber. I can do exactly the same thing with Messenger or WhatsApp. And again, this is just giving me a shortcut to open up communications with the Vonage Sandbox in the event that I weren't already engaged in a conversation with the Vonage Sandbox about what to have for lunch. We have some info on our developer resources site about testing with ngrok, which is a tool that we typically use to sort of tunnel from your local computer and your development environment locally to the wider internet so that you can use webhooks and test things out. You need to download that, and in order to do that, you have to do a little sign up. So there's a couple steps to it, but it's pretty easy and quick to set up. Once you do have ngrok installed, you can do ngrok HTTP 3000 or whatever port number you want from your command line, and that's going to open up a, a tunnel to your local development machine. So now you can use the uh, URL that it's going to provide to you in your webhooks and stuff. If you want, you can just kind of appropriate the terminal window that you're using to set up all your directories, do whatever initialization stuff you need to do, and use that to fire off that ngrok command. Once you do that, you're going to see that you get all this information here, most of which is cool URLs that you can copy and paste into places, and you'll see that these URLs correspond to localhost port 3000. And so you have this secure HTTPS URL. We can copy that, and then we're going to come over to the dashboard again. We're going to use this for our webhooks, so we're going to need to paste it into the messages sandbox if that's if that's the route that we're going. I'm assuming that we are. So messages and dispatch and the sub item is sandbox there. And so you can just replace um, whatever is in there already with the URL that you got from ngrok. And you can keep the same endpoint names or change them if you want answer an event, inbound and status, whatever suits your fancy. And with that, I think we're done for the most part exploring around the internet and clicking on links and going to URLs. We can return to our local machine and go ahead and run npm init to get set up with a package.json. I'm going to just run through that with the default options and then I'll just verify that it's there, package.json. Then I can pop over to my editor to get started coding. And I'll open up my working directory. 
and I should be able to just verify that this is the right place. Yep, there's package.json. Looks good. Looks like it's supposed to. Okay, now let's add some files. So I've called my main file server.js, so I'll create that. In a perfect world, my node server would be just exactly the same code that was in the curl command on the messages sandbox page, but obviously that won't work for a node server. So I'm going to go over here and install Axios, which is a package that I'm going to use to create something just as simple as I possibly can. So if we check out the Axios project, it's it's basically it just does the one thing. It's an HTTP client for making uh, requests. And so I can perform a get request, I can perform a post request. And in this case, uh, what I'm going to use it for is performing that post request to send exactly the same data that we had in the curl command. So I'll require Axios and then create a post here. And then I want to get the data and everything else that I'm going to put in here, um, including the URL from the curl command. So I'm just going to start copying stuff in, starting with the URL. And then we're going to need um, a couple of little objects here. And that's going to be the the payload that we're going to send along with that request. And I'm going to go back and get that stuff again from the curl command here. So I've got this, this date object here, and it contains a, a from and a to and a message. And so that's the that's the message that I'm going to send. That defines the message. And so handily, it's already all filled out for me. So I've got the WhatsApp number to send from and the one to send to. And then I've got some text, and you can change that text, obviously, to be to whatever you want. And then this the second object here is going to be is going to contain uh, my authorization. Um, so I will put a username and a password in there. And then finally, I want to handle um, I want to handle success and I want to handle a failure. The username and password that I want to give it are actually just my API key and API secret. And I can grab those from the Vonage dashboard and I'll just paste them right in here. And then I have my authentication credentials. Then I want to go ahead and create a, some kind of logic uh, console.dir, so not the most complex logic, to handle uh, the response that's going to come in, hopefully, when I run this command. And of course, I'll handle an error as well, just in case something goes wrong. So with that stuff in place, um, I'm going to go ahead and now comment it out just for a second so you can see that, um, that it's actually running and not erroring out um, very quickly. Yes, everything is good to go. Okay. So now we can um, go ahead and start the server um, via node server.js or npm start, whichever you prefer. And now I can uncomment this so we can see what is actually going to um, come back from that response. And so you get a ton of data here. So this is, this is a response that you get from the Vonage API. And it is thorough. Um, and most of that is, is part of HTTP itself. Um, but the important part here is the status, and that is a 200 status. And you can see that actually that's all it is because this is fake data. If you check out our developer resources, you can find detailed information on setting up messaging via the Messages API. So if we go here to the Messages API to Concepts, we can see, let's say, understanding WhatsApp messaging. And if we, we this is all about how WhatsApp works, how it works for business, and how you would set it up in general, and then via our APIs. Same thing for Viber. It's all pretty straightforward. You have a number, you send out messages, everything hopefully works if you've configured everything correctly, and Vonage helps you do that. And then we get over here to Facebook, and it's like, oh, Facebook is going to throw a little spanner in the works here because Facebook doesn't work exactly the same way. We can't just send out messages to a Facebook Messenger client. Somebody has to message us first. So we have to obtain the PSID of a user when the user sends a message to the business. So we're going to have to receive a message, basically, in order to send a message if we want to use Facebook Messenger. Axios has been a good friend to us, but now that we need to receive a message from Facebook Messenger, we're going to need something that can do some routing and something that looks more like a traditional node server. Of course, there's no more traditional node server than Express.js. And so we'll probably want to go ahead and install that from NPM in order to create the server for this next example. Really, we're not adding a whole lot on top of the example that we already built other than the ability to, to receive those messages. So uh, we don't need anything else. Let's take our old server.js and rename it so that we can save it. We'll just rename it Axios server so that we can keep it. 
and then we'll create a new server.js to work in. And in this file, we will just create what looks like a very simple Express server. So we'll require Express itself, then we will instantiate it so that we get an actual application and then with Express. And of course, we want to listen for the incoming requests from Facebook Messenger. So back in the sandbox page on the dashboard, I called my post webhook uh, that's going to receive the incoming messages answer, which is kind of a shout out to the Vonage voice API, but in hindsight is also maybe a little confusing. So answer is going to be your incoming message here in this server. And I'm going to have a function that gets a request and a response, as you would expect with Express. Actually, answer isn't a terrible name for this because the first thing I want to make sure that I do is send back a response. And that response doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just needs to be a simple status saying that I received the response and everything's okay. So I'm going to send back a status of 204 and then end the response. And that's what I want to make sure that I do in pretty much all of these webhook endpoints, just to make sure that uh, things don't get caught and never, uh, never end. I'll create a second endpoint here, which is for my status events, and I'm going to do pretty much just exactly the same thing, because right now I don't want to do anything interesting with these status events. In a real-world application, you would interrogate those for all kinds of useful information, I'm sure. But I am just going to ignore them, but I'm going to let the, the Vonage API know that I did receive them and everything's working okay. At this point, while things are still relatively skeletal, it's always a good idea to run back to the dashboard in the messages sandbox there and have a quick double check to make sure that the webhooks that you've defined are the HTTP method and the path name that you've specified in your application. You don't really actually have choices in terms of HTTP method. They're always going to be post for the messages sandbox, but that's not the case for your normal applications. You can use um, get or post for some types of endpoints. So it's just good to go double check, make sure that what you're Coding is what you're expecting to get. And why are we using post, you ask? Well, that's because we're going to get a request body that's going to come in when we get the incoming message there. So let's install body parser. And the big thing that we want from the request is, of course, the ID of the user who messaged us so that we can message them back. So we're going to call it from ID and we're going to get that from the request body dot from dot ID and then we can go and we can copy this um, this code that we used last time in our other server and just do the same thing again basically so we'll paste that in and then we're just gonna make a few little edits to this so the type is now going to be messenger which is Facebook messenger and that'll be for both the to and from. And then Facebook Messenger uses an ID instead of a number. So we're going to get an ID. That ID is going to be the from ID that we've saved and uh, the ID that is specific to the Facebook Messenger kind of client representation that's used in the messages sandbox. And we can copy that and then we can um, paste that in here and we can also update the message down there so that we have a little bit of variety because we're no longer going to use WhatsApp of course we're going to use Facebook and so we can make this Facebook Messenger and that will let us know that we're using the right server I guess if that was a concern okay so now you can see that we are using Axios again so we will need to require Axios up here so that we can actually get access to it. And this is going to execute ex the same logic that we used before. All that we're doing now is we're wrapping it in this route endpoint so that we can figure out who messaged us because of the, the peculiarities of Facebook Messenger. And that's, that's going to be it. So there's our Facebook Messenger server. Now it's good to go and we can go ahead and start uh, texting ourselves and receiving texts back and hopefully building some more complex logic on top of that. So 
let's save this now and we will put it on the stack with our Axios server so that we can get it out of the way and move on to our next example. We'll just rename it to Facebook Messenger or Facebook Server, let's say, and then it won't conflict with the new server.js that we're going to create now. But before we jump into this brand new server.js, there's one thing that I messed up here, and that's this from ID and to ID. These are reversed. They should be the opposite, and this always happens because everything is called from and to. I mean, it always happens to me. It probably doesn't happen to anybody else, but it's a good idea to make sure that the variables are what you expect them to be. When you're sending a message using the sandbox, the from ID should match the from ID in the curl command in the dashboard, essentially. This is yet another great argument for putting this stuff in environment variables, of course. So anyway, here's our new server.js file, and we are going to start a brand new server here. This server is really fancy because in this server, we're going to use our actual node SDK, which you get by npm installing Nexmo at beta. The reason we're using something called Nexmo is that until recently, Vonage and the Vonage API had two different names, which is a little confusing. So we'll just install that real quickly and it will download. Now we've got it, that's great. And we're using the beta version because that's gonna give us access to new features that are in beta themselves, such as the, the sandbox here. So we're busy people, we don't have time to type out a whole new express server by hand, so we'll just copy the one that we already have with body parser and everything else here. And we'll listen again on port 3000, that's great. And then we're going to declare a new constant, Nexmo, with a capital N, requiring the Nexmo. And this is a little bit of a confusing convention that we always use, but um, you'll see this in any of our code examples, so we'll do the same thing here. So we've got constant Nexmo equals require Nexmo, and then constant lowercase Nexmo equals the actual instantiation of this, so a new Nexmo. When we instantiate our client, we want to supply it with our credentials in an object here. And so we get the API key, API key, all one word, capital K, and that is from the getting started page in your dashboard. Um, but in this case, we're going to assume that everything is living in environment variables. So the properties API key, API secret, application ID, and private key will just set to be equal to environment variables of the same names for now. And then we'll come back to filling those out in just a second here. Really, you probably want the private key to actually be a path to a private .key file, but for for consistency, we'll just assume that it's an environment variable here. Okay, so now we're going to create the .env file, and we're going to use all these variable names, so we might as well just copy and paste them to make sure we don't have any typos. Eliminate all the rest of this foregoing stuff here, so that we're just leaving the variable names that we want to fill out. So we have API key, API secret, app ID, and private key. And then we will assign values to those. And these are all going to be um, strings. Um, pretty simple. This is this is just like a bash file. And so it's uh, very old school. There's nothing, nothing fancy, no typing going on in here. So we can get our API key and API secret from one of our previous servers, paste those in, into here. And then we're going to need to go and fetch the other two pieces from an actual application. So you can go back into your dashboard and then go to your applications. You can look through your applications. If you already have an application you want to use, you can get the application ID and private key from that, or you can create a brand new one. Once you have that information, you just paste it into this that env file here, and it should look something like that. And of course, that is not, again, the way that you actually handle a private key on your local machine. So if you were going to use your local machine, you'd probably use .env, which is a package um, that just imports all your environment variables and adds them to process.env. But it doesn't accept big, long strings of private key like the one that you just saw. Thankfully, my colleague Lorna has created a very good blog post about this, and so you can go check this out if you want all the secrets of how to use environment variables and private keys and things that have new lines in, uh, in quotation marks. 
the secret essentially is to get the base64 value and paste that into your environment variables there. So anyway, that's your credentials. You've got all your credentials. Now you've instantiated an XMO client. Congratulations. So now we're going to send SMSs with that XMO client. To send something via the SDK, we use nextmo.channel.send. And then there are three objects that we want to give as arguments to the send function here. And they're going to pull apart all of the stuff that we were sort of sending as a big block of data in our previous servers here. So in the first case here, in the first object here, what we want is our type. This should look familiar by now which is going to be SMS in this case. Along with our type, we need an identifier, which for SMS is, of course, a phone number. And so this is going to be the two number. This is a little bit confusing because in a lot of the examples that we've seen so far, from is first and two is second. But when you're using the SDK, two is first and then we have from. So the first object here is the two object. The second is the from object. And so this number, is going to be one of the numbers that I own. And again, if you haven't memorized all of your Vonage virtual numbers, you can go back into the dashboard here and just copy them with a little handy copy button. Here we go. Copy that, bring that back over to your editor, paste it into your from object here. Then the third and final object here is going to be the contents of the message itself. And so within this object, we're looking for property called content, which is helpful. That's another object. And then that's got a type, which in this case is going to be text, because we're just going to send a plain text message. And the text of the text message is going to be, well, whatever you want it to be. You could be very cool and modern and use a template literal here, or you could just expand all your contractions so that you sound like a robot from the 1980s. And then once we've created all of our data objects here, we're also going to need a little callback because once this send command runs, we're going to still need to do stuff with whatever we get back, that, that big, big block of data that you might remember from the first example. We're not going to do anything very exciting. We're going to get an error if one exists and some data, and we're just going to log both of those to the console essentially. Um, if the error exists, then we'll return after we log it out. But for most scenarios, the thrill of sending an SMS is going to be actually sending it, not seeing the data that resulted from it. So there we go. We've got our send SMS function. Now we're going to take this and we're just going to try to copy it. And we're going to copy it in order to create something very similar. It's about time we gave Viber some love, so let's make this the send Viber function. And Viber also has a little quirk that we will cover in just a second here. Let's first update the type. This is a little bit of a break with the pattern that WhatsApp and Messenger use. So the type of Vi a Viber message is not just Viber, but Viber underscore service underscore MSG. It's a little bit of a mouthful compared to the other two, but at least we're being precise. The other funny part is that you send to a Viber number, you send from a Viber ID in the sandbox. And so we got to get the, the, again, the ID that's associated with the sandbox here from the curl command. And you can see that odd pattern is reflected there in the, the curl command too. So we'll paste this in here. However, unlike the send SMS function, this is not just good to go the way that we've typed it here, even with our replacements, because there's one other really crucial thing we need to change, and that's the actual Nextmo client that we're sending it from. See, this Nextmo client here is just your normal Nextmo client using the production API. We need to use the Sandbox API, and so in order to do that, we're going to actually go ahead and create a second client here. Of course, it would be a little bit unprofessional to have these duplicate clients in production, but then you wouldn't be using a sandbox in production. So we'll call our copy sandbox, and we can supply all the same credentials. We could even probably skip the application stuff since we don't need it. 
but we're going to supply a second argument here, a second object, and that's going to be a configuration object, which is going to give us the option of replacing the API host. You can copy this from the curl command also, but it's messages-sandbox.nextmode.com. So using this, we can now alternate between sending SMSs and sending messages on services WhatsApp, Viber, and Messenger that we may not yet have our organization represented on. So we can try things out here using this sandbox client that we've created separately from our production client. So cool, now we have both of them running together. Now we're in a position to start testing out an app that will respond to people who message us using whatever communication medium they've chosen to use. So let's go back to our Facebook server here and we can copy some of the stuff that we need, mainly body parser and some body parsing stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna use body parser here again and we're gonna do that because we're going to again interrogate the request that's coming in when we handle that uh, webhook. So we can just copy if we want our, our answer endpoint here from the Facebook server also, and we'll replace the stuff that we don't need in here with some logic to differentiate between the type of message that we're getting. We can go ahead and just wipe out this middle Axios bit because we're not gonna send anything from here. We just wrote the functions to send stuff. And instead of a from ID, what we want to get here is a from type. So we'll call it from underscore type, and we can get that from request.body.from type, as you might have guessed. We're only handling two types of message here, so we don't need a lot of intense logic. We can just use an if and an else. So if the from type is an SMS, that's uppercase SMS. So if it's if it's an SMS, then we're going to go ahead and use the send SMS function. If on the other hand the from type is a Viber service message, and it will never be both an SMS and a Viber service message. So if it's a Viber service message, then we want to go ahead and send a Viber message from our send Viber function. And to test out Viber or something else using this handbox, you might hard code things like this in terms of the functions and the uh, switching between what type of what type of uh, client you're using but you also of course have the option of making it dynamic for use in a, a real world application or as the basis for a real world application so we can take the send sms function and we can pass in the request body dot from dot number to the number that the sms is coming from if it is an sms same deal with Viber, we can pass in the number of the client that actually messaged us. So here in these functions, we can add the parameter to the function signature here, so that then we are able to wipe out this hard-coded value and substitute a variable. Now we can try out our service from multiple clients, and of course we can take this code and use it as a basis for something we would actually run in production because it's one less thing hard-coded that we have to worry about. So if you've been following along at this point, you have a working application that you can go ahead and start playing with and testing against. You can also, of course, change the types of messages it supports so that it supports WhatsApp or Messenger or even all four different channels if you want. So all you have to do to start it up is node server.js, of course, in any of the clients that you've already approved to use with the sandbox, you'll have an open conversation with the Vonage sandbox that you can use to then test this out. And if you're using SMS as a channel, then you'll have a Vonage virtual number that you've rented that you can text to. And that will allow you to try this out. You can add some logic, make it do some cool things, and you can pretty much take it wherever you went from here. So there you have it, the Vonage Messages API Sandbox. I hope that that's given you some insight into how to use our APIs and some ideas for servers or services you might create with WhatsApp, Viber, Facebook Messenger, and SMS. Uh, have fun creating. Uh, hit us up on Slack in our community Slack or email. Reach out to us if you need any assistance. Uh, we're here to help. Thanks.